Today's spotlight video is about miniatures. I'll offer some thoughts on making your own or what you might want to look for if you want to jump in the deep end and start purchasing some stuff. I'll provide links in the description where you can find this stuff and I'll talk through the prices, pros and cons of each. But first, why miniatures? Combat is one of the three pillars of 5th edition D&D gameplay and it's certainly the most exciting one. There's an old school term called theater of mind, which is to say that you might run combat through imagination and narrative only. You describe a scene and tell your players where the monsters are. DMs and players keep track of where things were and that's about it. It's fast and back in the day, it's all you had. You see, there wasn't much in the secondary markets of terrain, battle mats, miniatures, and so on. When I started, we had some D&D books, graph paper, pens, pencils, and dice. That's it. If you needed anything else, you built it yourself. Today, however, there's a plethora. Ooh, plethora is always such a good word. A plethora of options. Let's assume you aren't going to narratively describe combat, and you aren't simply tracking player and monster positions on a whiteboard. No, you want something a bit more grand. You've built a Lego set, or you've acquired some cool Dwarven Forge terrain. Perhaps you've done as I do, and spent a week crafting a goblin cave out of foam. Point is, there's a place to fight on the table, and now you need to populate it with your PCs and all the monsters. Let's begin with what you have. You might not realize how many board game bits and chits you have lying around. Sometimes even little miniatures. Use those. Try and stick to appropriate scale. That way, when a giant moves around on your mat, you get a better visual of how much space it takes up. If you don't have board game minis, perhaps Lego, little toys, knickknacks. Look for tokens, pawns, meeples. You can even use Skittles and gummy bears. Use anything to represent the creatures on your table. You can always stick some labels on them, color them, or mark them up with Sharpies, writing PC names on each. Number the tokens one through seven, representing the seven goblins your PCs will fight. This is the least expensive option because you're using stuff that you already have. That's the pro. The con is it isn't exact. While it allows for more precise tracking of where everything is than theater of the mind, you'll still need imagination to take it further. That red disc is an orc, and the large block of wood, that's an ochre. Pretend, pretend that that's a seed. It's a rock. Oh, I know it's a rock, I know, but let's just pretend for a minute that it's a seed, all right? We'll just use our imaginations. Now, now do you see our tree? Everything that made that giant tree is already contained inside this tiny little seed. All it needs is some time, a little bit of sunshine and rain, and voila! This rock will be a tree. Seed to tree, you've got to work with me here, all right? Okay, now, you might not feel like you can do much now, but that's just because, well, you're not a tree yet. You just have to give yourself some time. You're still a seed. But it's a rock. I know it's a rock! Next, you have the DIY, do-it-yourself print-and-play miniatures. Here, you find a cool image of the characters and monsters, lay them out through design, print them, stick them onto popsicle sticks, and into an appropriate base. The pro here is you get exactly what you want, even size. If you have an idea of a nashy, undead ghoul thing, find that art online, save it, manipulate it, fold it over the stick, and use either clips or empty bases. It's relatively cheap once you buy all the bases or the tin of clips. The con is, well, you need some sort of design software. See, I don't count my Adobe Creative Suite towards my D&D costs because I use it for more than just D&D. But needing and using Photoshop for this DIY stuff might be a stopgap. A step up from the do-it-yourself print and build miniatures is using Pathfinder Pawns. There's tens of thousands out there and they come in boxes. On Amazon, at least, you'll get about 250 pawns for about $25. It's a really good price, and pawns are both durable and the artwork is outstanding. These pawns are my go-to option if I don't want to invest in actual 3D minis. The cons are, they aren't as pretty on the table as professionally painted 3D miniatures. The pros, kind of as already mentioned, is you'll often find exactly what you need because there's so many options for an orc, and most importantly, 
you'll get about 200 plus pawns for 20 to 30 bucks US dollars. Pawn boxes also come with bases as well, often detailed on the box itself. And if you need more bases, you can always buy bags of them online. Here's another really cool thing about using Pathfinder pawns. Once you start to go into the next step of actual 3D minis, you can begin with using 3D minis for your PCs only and using pawns for your monsters. That way, the PCs know exactly where they are at all times on your table because they're gonna stand out from the 2D pawn monsters that you're using. Next, we'll move into 3D miniatures. The old school stuff was a bunch of metal minis by Reaper. At least, that's who I think it was. Reaper's been at this for a really long time, and the first miniatures that I used were heavy and metal, weapons that you can toss at an unfair DM. Don't buy that stuff, because even though you might find a bulk of them on the cheap, it's not as elegant for paint, and the sculpts are, to put it simply, they're kind of 20 years ago. They sometimes look just like a muddied mess of metal. What you want to look for is Reaper now sells plastic miniatures in their lines of both Reaper Bones and Reaper Bones Black. Reaper Bones are plastic, and they have a heavy D&D look to it, but they're not exactly monster manual D&D. Let me explain. See, most of my Reaper plastic minis fit the bill when I'm looking for an orc grunt or a monstrous humanoid thing. When we look at the next group of minis coming up in a minute here with Nozours, they're going to feel a bit more D&D specific. The point is, if you want a bit more variety and custom look to your dwarves, you might go with Reaper Bones, as they're just dwarves, versus the Nolzur's dwarves are D&D specific dwarves, often as you've seen in the player's handbook or elsewhere. Both Reaper Bones and Reaper Bones Black come unpainted and unprimed, but otherwise they should be quick and ready to go. You might need a little bit of assembly, but it usually isn't that much. Now, as to that separation of Reaper Bones Black, that's their new line of miniatures, which I think came out in 2019. They're a bit more expensive, but the sculpts are worth it. They have really nice detail and they're perfect for D&D. Finally, both the Bones and the Bones Black miniatures do sit on some sort of base, but they don't come with the little circle bases that you might see in the Nolzur's line of miniatures. Up next for 3D minis is Pathfinder Deep Cuts. Now these start to really feel D&D specific rather than just fantasy. The sculpts are detailed and they look good and they have a very familiar D&D look to them. The pro of Pathfinder Deep Cuts is you'll get about two of them for about five bucks. They're unpainted, but they are primed and ready to paint, and they do come with the circle bases in the package. Now, for these minis, there's not really a con other than, as a 3D miniature, you are spending a lot more than you would for the otherwise 2D pawns that I mentioned already. Up next is the Nolzur line of miniatures. These are similar in detail to what you'll find with Pathfinder Deep Cuts or the Reaper Bones Black. Generally, for some medium-sized Nolzur's miniatures, you'll get a pair, whether a pair of bards or a pair of ghouls, for about five bucks. It's a good price, clocking in at around $2.50 per miniature. They're gonna be unpainted, but they are primed and ready to go out of the package, and they will also have bases, little circle bases to go with them. Finally, for unpainted, you could look into any of the miniatures by Games Workshop, kind of the Warhammer Fantasy stuff. You'll often spend more money as a single miniature can cost upwards of 50 bucks or more, but you can find some box sets of 10 skeletons for about 30 to 40 bucks, which isn't a bad deal at three to four dollars a mini. Although, of course, they are unpainted. Now, these guys are made for a different game, but often the sizes are appropriate, and as they're fantasy, they will fit nicely on your table. The pro here of using Games Workshop miniatures are the sculpts. One thing is certain, Games Workshop just makes really cool stuff. You won't find just an orc, but an orc with a massive axe, a neat backpack, alchemical stuff hanging from his armband, and a half-broken warhelm of chaos and death. If you want variety in your humanoid armies, maybe look into Games Workshop's fantasy miniatures. If you're fond of and have the painting skill, I believe nothing looks better than a table of fully painted Games Workshop minis. And finally, we'll get into painted miniatures. Nolzur's has a line of HD minis which come pre-painted. You'll spend about twice as much as an unpainted package of Nolzur's, where if you're gonna get the unpainted stuff for about five bucks for a pack of two, a pack of two Nolzur's HD, which are the painted ones, is probably double the price, costing about seven to 10 bucks. But if you don't like painting or you suck at it, these painted miniatures are so worth it. The paint job is also really good, and the miniature's ready to go and throw down on your table during combat immediately. There's also some blind boxes. You'll often find these attached to specific settings or adventure books. 
Grab a hold of Eberron miniatures, and while you don't know exactly what you'll get, you will know the quantity and the size for the price, as it often says it on the box. Now, these guys aren't top-notch in paint detail, but all the work is done for you. They're 100% ready to go and throw onto your table. Here's an important note and something to consider about 3D miniatures, at least when we're talking unpainted versus painted. You'll get a lot more minis for your money if you go the unpainted route, but if you give a rat's ass about the look, you're gonna spend about two hours per miniature in painting them. When you have 90 unpainted miniatures on your shelf, you might have wished you just bought painted ones. There's nothing worse than boxes of unopened and unpainted miniatures on your shelf that you're reluctant to use because they're all just flat gray or flat white. Based on how many miniatures I have unpainted, it's gonna take me about a full year before they all hit the table in full color. Perhaps I should have just worked a little more, spent more money and got the painted ones. But perhaps you really love painting. In that case, have at it. But certainly respect the time that it's gonna take away from your map and your world building and your D&D prep time. Painting takes time, and when you have 90 blank ones, it's gonna take you a while. After all this, you could go on to websites like Hero Forge, where you can custom build your exact mini, and they'll 3D print it, and they'll send it to you. Now here, on this website, you have tons of options, and you can really create the exact look you're going for, but you're gonna spend about 30 bucks for a single miniature, and it's unpainted. That's good for PCs, but prohibitively expensive if you're trying to fill a clan of orcs. There's a lot to chew on there, but I hope it all helped. Regardless of what you use, always remember, you can't replace a good story and good friends. Thanks everyone for watching and take care.